and of course the children. The last times that I've been to the border, my goodness, the, uh, the airports in El Paso, Harlingen, McAllen, San Antonio, Del Rio, it's just full of illegal aliens, and they're all flying, flying commercial. I've flown with so many illegal aliens, and I'm thinking, you know what, this, is, this is, can't be right. This is, why is the TSA complicit? Why is American Airlines complicit? Why are they allowing this to happen when I took a picture of this little young boy next to me? That guy is not his father. People ask me, how do you know he's not his father? I had already talked to him. It's happened to me many, many times, and I interview them, and they, about them, they know everything. Oh, I'm gonna go meet my brother, I'm gonna go work here, blah, blah, blah. What about this little girl? What about this little boy? They have no idea. If it was your child, you would be excited. I'm in the US, I'm gonna put him in school, da, 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 da. They have no clue, because it's not theirs. They're trafficking the child. Who knows where this boy is right now? Can you imagine me feeling, that's my subject matter expertise, is human trafficking. And I'm sitting there next to this child. I have no idea, no control as to where they're going. But this administration will give up, give them up to sponsors. Anyone that says they want to be a sponsor, and they'll take them. So just, I want you to see that, in fact, you can do it legally. And the federal designation of the FTO goes through the U.S. Department, U.S. State Department. That's where it goes through. That's where the, the channel will go through, through uh, the Immigration Nationality Act. And it goes through OFAC because what would it do? If you designate these cartels as foreign terrorist organizations, where do you hit them? You hit them in the pocketbook. Immediately you get to seize all their assets and their money. That's what the cartels want, money and power. There's the bigger picture we know, China, Venezuela. Um, and I'll tell you a story because uh, Patrick Byrne yesterday brought up Venezuela and the cartel Los Soles. And I got a call from the uh, uh, South Texas, the hill country, from one of my sources and says, hey, I saw a guy with a 4% tattoo on his neck. And I used to be a gang intel when I worked at the state, and my friend, I don't know that one. I don't know 4%, what does that, what does that mean? So I put it out in my, with my contact to see what the heck a 4% is. He was at an HEB, which is a local grocery store in Texas. I get the call back and says, hey, Victor, that's a bad guy, man. The 4% is from Cartel, he's Venezuelan, Cartel de los Soles, and the 4% uh, signifies a division or neighborhood of that cartel in Venezuela with the name of the, I forget the name of D, which is, that's why it's the four. And I go, where, where was this guy? I go, in Hill Country, and down south in Texas, and he's there. That's where, they're everywhere. They're here. They're here in your community. They're walking into the grocery store where you go shop. And what does it do? You're able to then take these guys and take their assets. And I say that all these gangs in Chicago, the black gangster disciples, the Latin kings, and all these big uh, other people that distribute the drugs for the cartels, if you would designate the Sinaloa cartel and the cartel Jalisco New Generation as a terrorist organization, just like ISIS, I think eventually these members, these gang members are gonna be like, hey, I don't wanna associate with a terrorist organization, I'm not a terrorist. Because if they would, if you start talking to somebody from ISIS right now, you're gonna get a knock on your door. Well, the same thing, it would happen with the Sinaloa cartel. That's how we kinda go and infiltrate. Yes, it's a little cumbersome. We need state and locals on board on this, but it, it, we're at that point. We're at that point where these cartels are having a major, major impact in our, in our uh, state. That's a cartel member uh, walking in, in Texas at a ranch, fully armed, and of course a lot of illegals coming through the ranches. And the ranchers in Texas tell me, I've, I interviewed a lot of them, said, Victor, we have guns in Texas. We can shoot this guy, we'll kill him. 
but we're afraid because the cartel is going to send the wrath and murder our families. They're afraid to do that kind of action because they don't feel they're going to get the... Uh, we thought this was a, uh, some kind of device. Uh, apparently it was a Mexican firework, but they put it out there. But here's the, the, this is one of my biggest things and the reason why I fight is because we have a crime problem in the United States of America at all levels, right? Not only do we have a crime surge, uh, we have a problem with justice and the justice, criminal justice system where a police officer will do their job, an agent will do their job, arrest them, but guess what? The DA lets them go, right? No charges or revolving door, uh, bail reform, all that, right? We have a problem. So why do we need illegal aliens coming here and committing more crimes? And that guy in the middle in the red shirt killed a Houston police officer. This guy killed a three-year-old girl on uh, her tricycle on a cul-de-sac. These guys are all sex offenders. And these I have so many examples over and over and over and over and over again of these people coming to commit crimes, especially these, the special interest aliens, Department of Homeland Security calls them SIAs. And I've interviewed them when I was in Mexico, I got access to uh, some of the detention facilities where they were being held. And this is 10 years ago. And they've been in Mexico for a long time. As a matter of fact, they have set up shop in Mexico. And now that Biden has been there for two years, they love it. They're bringing everybody from the Middle East. And we're, they're bringing them from special interest countries. Somalia, Iran, Bangladesh, you know, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen. These are individuals that are coming from countries that are sp sponsored by terrorism. And we have no idea, no idea what their intentions. I interviewed them and I tried to get that information from them. They wouldn't say a word. One would say, I'm going to New York, that's it. That's about all I could get out of them with an interpreter. And these guys, different identities. One identity in the southern part of uh, Mexico, one different identity in Mexico City, and a third identity when they got to the border. We started doing biometrics and uh, scanning their eyes to make sure that we at least had to know that it was the same person that we were uh, dealing with. 